How would you put this event in context for Iowa Democrats as they look at the caucuses? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm standing before you today. Uh, I am a candidate. I'm standing before you today as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, someone who's deeply involved in U.S. Pakistani affairs, who has laid out in significant detail what our policy should be with regard to Pakistan um, in, in stark relief from uh, what is, has not been happening. We need a Pakistani policy, not a Mashar policy. One of the things that, that uh, Benazir Bhutto talked about when we spoke is that uh, she understood that uh, a policy based upon an individual leader is a policy that is not a rational policy for the people of Pakistan. There has to be a long-term relationship with what I continue to believe is a significant, significant, moderate, secular middle class in Pakistan who want a democracy. That should be the focus of U.S. foreign policy and U.S. Um, uh, uh, efforts. And t toward that end, I've laid out, I'd be happy to for you with it again, uh, um, copies of the speech I made uh, about uh, uh, two weeks ago, laying out in stark relief what I thought the specifics of U.S. Pakistani policy should be based upon. And one of the things I liked about her, I, there, there, there's a personal piece to this. Um, I don't claim to have been a close friend, but I was a close associate. I have met with her many, many times. I, I, uh, I personally uh, um, liked her. I, uh, um, I, uh, it's just sad uh, to have someone who, uh, who, who you know, in my case, who I knew, who uh, I knew that she knew this was a distinct possibility. It takes a lot of courage. This is a courageous woman. How many leaders in the world would do what she did? go back to a country where she was obviously not overwhelmingly welcomed by the political leadership that at the time and is a, was a military dictatorship. That um, uh, after she got there, uh, many of her followers blown up, uh, scores of them. And uh, yet I talked to her after that and she was as resolved as she ever was to, because she thought it was essential, essential that Pakistan be a democracy. And she believed, as I believe, that given a fair and free opportunity, the vast majority of the people of Pakistan are secular and moderate. And it's not only in the interest of Pakistan, but the whole world that you restore such a government. And here's a woman who, after all she's been through, not having all the security she felt she needed, sat there and decided in a very cold and calculating way that she would go forward. And according to Ed Joseph, uh, um, at Brookings in my email to me this morning, she was extremely optimistic the night before she died. She was fully aware of the fact that there might be chicanery. She was fully aware of the fact that these weren't a textbook example of free and fair elections because the martial law had been lifted so recently, because the Supreme Court had been replaced. But she had overwhelming optimism. Optimism. And to the to the extent that she moved forward was really a remarkable, remarkable testimony.